I've brought together a team of five sketchers here to make hilarious comic sketches just for you viewers at home. That's right, we're gonna bring comedy to your town. And our first sketch will be... Lifeline Lane! I never said that, and you know it! Oh, enough. Oh, enough. I've had enough. I know I'm just a lowly janitor, but that. But one day, I hope to be a doctor. Well, I'm not the one that mopped up Terrell's wedding ring when he came home. His wife thought he was cheating, and they divorced, and I was okay with this. They had issues, I knew. But this took a big toll on their son, Zerhold. He's now homeless and saving up money to go to the No Olympics to save up money for a trash can. Oh, you didn't just... I'm sorry I brought this up, okay? It's just, uh, I lost a patient. We're losing him. Boo, red is sus. Red is such an amogus susie baka. Oh no, Red is sus. I didn't think he'd become a dying meme. According to my calculation, his lifespan would have naturally ended in a few weeks like any other meme. But his susie baka has kept him going for the past few years, but views have been consistently dwindling. I can't lose this joke. I rely on him too much. Maybe you have to broaden your comedy. I've been having trouble finding other memes. They all keep dying before I get to know them, like Creaser J's and Pink Sauce. He's looping! Can't be good. Quick, someone make him relevant! He's stabbing! We've got to hold him! We're losing him! We're losing him! It's a new viral video. It says it was posted by Gordon the janitor. Gordon, I'm sorry for saying so things about you. You deserve to be a doctor. How about you take my next patient? Really? But I'm not a doctor yet. You're a doctor to me. Okay. <laughs> what seems to be the problem, sir? I, I'm dying. My immune system is shutting down because I came into contact with a viral meme. Uh, this looks like a job for, um, some medicine. <coughs> uh, 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 nope, not that one. Uh, maybe, uh, this one. Oh, oh, what, what are you doing? Are you even qualified? Well, you see, a long, long time ago, I mean, like, five minutes ago, I was a janitor but I was trusted to be a doctor by a colleague after an emotion, emotional moment. Janitor? Did you even go to medical school? Well, no, but... Help! This man's trying to poison me! What? No! <laughs> Police! You're under arrest! Now, for our next sketch... Excuse me, sir. What now? An officer is here to arrest you. What? I'll deal with this later. For now, our next sketch will be... Tricycle Chase! Seltzers, five dollars. Give me all your seltzer, I'll use my finger. 
<laughs> you can have everything! Just don't shoot! This was too easy. Who know finger guns could be so threatening? Hey, what are you doing with those illegal seltzers? Oh no, a cop! Wait, it's only Officer True. We couldn't catch a fly even if it was lying dead in front of him. Hey, I heard that you know. That was socially mean. If you say that one more time, I'm gonna have to file a bullet for him again. I mean, arrest you. No can do, Officer True. I got a better place to be than jail. <laughs> oh boy, for the laziest officer, he runs pretty fast. I'm going to need something in order to outrun him. Perfect. There's got to be something in here that I can use. Oh, is there anything you need? I'm looking for a car. We don't have cars. What? But your sign says rent a car! I realized it would be more financially viable not to carry certain things. Financially viable? Ah, I don't have time to argue. Do you have anything else? We have bicycles. I'll take one. Um, actually, we ran out of bicycles yesterday. What? Do you have anything that is currently here? Oatmeal. I don't want to know everything you have inside the building. Don't tell me what you have for lunch. Tell me what you have in stock. That's not for me. That's one of the store's vital supplies. And why is that? It appeases the geese. Geese? Every week they come for tribute. And if we don't comply, they will end us all! That's insane. No, it's not. It makes perfect sense. Well, I don't care about your geese or your oatmeal. I need something to ride. Do you understand? Ride? Because uh, I think your mental speed's a bit lacking here. We have tricycles. Do you have anything else? No! Fine, I'll take one. Okay, so how would you like to pay for it? We don't accept cash, credit, debit, pineapple pay, or any other sort of money. Then how am I supposed to pay for it? We accept food. Fine, well, good luck. I have a seltzer. I don't like seltzers. What? Okay, I'm not even gonna bother. I'm a criminal anyways. I'm just gonna take this. Ah. Where's Officer True? Gotcha! <laughs> well, you see, it's because it's pretty pimp. Uh, when you were going to get a little bag over there, I had a head and 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 I had a head. Uh, well, yeah, so you see, what I was surprised me was screaming in the face with a head and I had 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 a head. I want you to stand right there while I'm finishing this out there, okay? Even if you want to leave. Uh, what a strange individual. Yeah, you make me make shit. Hey, get back here! Talk with Johnny Table in this exclusive behind the scenes segment. Floyd Davids, the actor who played Golden on Extreme Network medical drama Lifeline Lane, and his body double Lloyd Derricks are here to discuss the last episode that premiered just minutes ago. But first, let's introduce the two. We have Floyd. Now, you say you've started out your acting career as a child actor? That's right, Johnny Table. I play the baby on a soap opera called The Times of the Day. I think I have my audition tape. Can we roll that? Hi, my name's Floyd Davins, and I'm four feet tall, and for my audition, I'll be speaking a line from Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. Now isn't that something? You know, I think my grandma watched Times of the Day, and I had had that go. I wasn't particularly liked on the show, and I think that's from the accusations by the cast about me being a Nepo baby, which is like, no way, fam. Just because my dad was a producer and casting director for the show doesn't mean anything. So anyways, I'm glad you mentioned that grandma aspect because when they were wrote me off the show after like a five year run, which for a streaming show is incredible, but uh, is terrible for soap operas, 
they ended up not writing a reason why it was gone. Instead, sent a message to their elderly viewer base that they might uh, must not be remembering things right. What a story! Now tell us about how you got on Lifeline Land. Why well, tell you what I can show you? Roll the clip! Hi, my name's Floyd Davis. I'm five feet eight inches tall, and for my audition, I'd like to speak a line from my fave show, Hamlet. Uh, Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. All right. Isn't he something? What an audition! That's the same audition from when you were a child, and you only said one line. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm sorry, I'm Lloyd, Floyd's body double. I actually auditioned for the role of Gordon, but when it went to Floyd instead, the production had to me be his body double on the count of our vague re resemblance. Oh, come on. Vague resemblance? You two blokes look exactly the same. No, we don't. I do my hair very differently from him. Mine is more refined. And this freckle, it does not match. And this, this is a scar from when I was hit in the eye with a shovel by a violent preschooler. True story, this one. Now, now, I think we're getting off topic. Oh, Floyd, always the voice of reason. What an individual here, don't you think? So, can you talk about the thought process for that last episode? Well, this was really the culmination of my character for the past 102 episodes. I hope the viewers will find it very uh, satisfying. I personally think it was a very weak conclusion. Oh, who cares about your opinion? Were you even in that episode? For the record, I was. See that? That's the back of my head. Look at the emotional weight those swivels carry. Well, ignoring that, and what about that ending, huh? Incredible, astounding, what a twist. Well, that was actually a setup for a spin-off about my, my character's time in prison. We have a preview here for you. Go. Dear diary, my time in prison has been better than I expected. It's a real social atmosphere. I've already made some new friends. Hey, new guy, you have you want to get shanked? Um, no thanks. <laughs> Wow! What a clip! I was on the edge of my seat watching that one. You know, I think this is daytime Emmy material. And you know, Johnny, the crazy thing about that one is our group didn't come in, so we had to use a real shank on me. What? But hey. calm down, Lloyd. By mean, I mean my character. Now, I wasn't the person who actually had to get shanked, but th that was my body double. Yup, the wound's still fresh. And, you know, if the industry cared more about body doubles, I'd be getting some award for this. But we face very little recognition. That's why I've been trying to pivot back to acting. I've actually written a script where I play Gordon's incarcerated twin, Brother Carmen. Needless to say, the network's not picking that one up. Am I right? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it looks like our time is up. What? what? Already? Can I just say one thing? Hey, this is not over. This is not over. So, what exactly am I being arrested for? Um, it says underage drinking. What? But I don't drink. Apparently someone saw you eat a cake of which you put alcohol in it. And officers saying that the consumption of alcohol is technically underage drinking. This is ridiculous. It bakes off. It's just for flavor. Uh, tell that to my lawyer. But you don't have a lawyer. Then I'll just hire the cheapest option. Looks like the cheapest guy here is this one Roy Shields. He's got an ad. I'd better check it out. Do you need a lawyer? Well, you come to the bright place. I may not have a law, a law degree, but I've watched videos about law on YouTube. A lot of them. In fact, 100 of them. I, call, I got a little medal from YouTube about it, but that's going off topic. Also, well, I have a lot of experience in court because of all those crimes I committed, but that's my past. Don't worry about that. I've won lots of money for my clients. One of them even got $50. That's so much money. Last year, I was run over by a haywire school bus, but with the help of Roy Shields, I was able to get back $10. 10 okay? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It cut my medical bills in half. 
Well, it was mostly um, when I mortgaged my house that the medical bill got cut in half, but that helped too, sort of. Custody settlements are always a bummer. But with Roy Shields, it's easy. And now I get to see my kid a whole five times a year. I can count on Roy Shields for law stuff. Remember your lies. I'm paying you to lie about this. See, all my clients adore me. So you should choose me. Oh. You missed the trial. I had to represent myself. They gave me 20 years to life for my parking violation. Well, gotta run. This guy looks awful. That may be true, but I'm getting him. Looking at that ad took too much time already. I don't have any space to look at other lawyers in this show. It reminds me, I gotta get to the next sketch. Which will be... Sketchy Histories! Okay. This story is about one of the most beloved and renowned characters in the A Little Sketchy series, Mr. Bob. In this ode to Bob, his past is finally cleared up and is put into a new light. For this story to be truly absorbed, there shall be no comedy at all. And... What do you mean, no comedy? The whole point of the show is for the audience to have laughs! This story is too serious to be comedic. Now, shut up and pay attention. In the year of 1847, a boy named Bob was born on the Martin Baz Islands. No one expected much from this boy. He was runty and weak, probably wouldn't survive a day of life. However, this boy would surprise everyone and become a world-known soldier the deadliest spy, and end up the owner of the biggest illegal coal mining business. This is his story. I'm your narrator, Rich Stevens, and this is Sketchy Histories. And today, we'll be talking about the story of Mr. Bob. That's a little bit dramatic for a sketch. This is no ordinary sketch. It is a work of art, a tale that rises above the weaknesses and flaws of others. It needs no such thing as comedy to be truly great. It is meant to be an emotional, melodramatic journey. Okay, okay, I didn't mean to def offend you or anything. Well, you did. And no more interruptions. The town that Bob lived in wasn't rich. The houses were made out of cardboard. The main source <laughs> of food was cardboard. They drank cardboard <laughs> contaminated water because that was the cleanest water they had. <laughs> this led to an unhealthy obsession with cardboard. <laughs> but that is another story. The name of this town was Papier. Its residents <laughs> were a gloomy bunch. They gave harsh punishments for the simplest misdemeanors. This can include being beaten with cardboard, <laughs> being forced to eat rotting cardboard, as opposed to normal cardboard, having to be locked up in the box, or being sent to the illegal coal mines in the U.S. And this last one is what made unsuspecting bibbity bobbity little baby Bobby Bob into the terrifying Mr. Bob. What is it with this town? Are you guys not? Are you sure this isn't fictional? Of course it isn't fictional. How could you say something like that? This is a very realistic story. You know what? Just pretend I didn't say anything and continue. Okay. When Mr. Bob was eight, his class was reading the famous book, Cardboard Island. They were to memorize the first chapter and recite it in front of the class. However, instead of studying, Mr. Bob hey, partied buddy, with his buddy, friends. Buddy, this caused him okay. to not be able to recite the English passage. He failed his assignment in under two seconds, a new record on the island. Now, dear viewers, there is something you need to understand. In the first episode of A Little Sketchy, we had introduced Mr. Bob, and he had told you this story. Now. Why I might have been wondering when Mr. Bob was sent to the coal mines for failing in school. It seems so harsh. Well, here is your answer. I already had mentioned how the town of Papier punished the smallest of misdemeanors harshly. Well, according to them, the most horrible crime a person could commit is failing school. Bob had not only failed school, he had done it with record-breaking speed. So obviously, the most harsh punishment was needed. Being sent the coal mines. 
Now, I'm not sure how a town who couldn't afford actual houses afforded a trip to America, but they somehow did it. And Bob was sent to work in the illegal mines of the U.S. This town is really messed up. No one asked for your opinion. Now, will you just listen? No. Bob might not seem like a hard worker, but when forced to work hard, he worked really hard. Bob's mining rate was 400 pounds of coal per hour, which is a lot. He was respected so much, he could get away with even insulting his superiors. The mines toughened Bob, and this is when he decided to change his name to Mr. Bob. That is the most stupid name change ever, if you can even call it that. All he did was add a Mr. before his name. I'm not even sure that's how it works. It doesn't matter what he changed his name to. It just matters what he did, and that is what I'm trying to tell you. Everything seemed to be going great for Mr. Bob. He was respected and expected to be promoted. He had a lot of friends and buddies. He had gotten a bunch of awards too, like Miner of the Year, Diamond in Coal, and the most treasured one, the Dirtiest Dirt. However, it all went wrong for him when he turned 20. The mines had started experimenting with this new thing called dynamite. It had recently been invented, and the mines were the best place to test them. Mr. Bob had been put in charge of these experiments. However, in a tragic accident, a stick of dynamite was blown up too early. Mr. Bob lost his left hand, and before he could escape the mine, it caved in. Everyone thought he was dead, and they paid their respects, then continued their work. It was a sad time. The mines had lost their best worker, and the close friends of Mr. Bob had depression. Soon, the mines couldn't function anymore and closed down. Mr. Bob's death had caused the end of the illegal mining business. Or did it? Find out how Mr. Bob survived the disaster and much more in the next chapter of Dissy History. So, you'd be the client, right? That's me. Well, I just need to know your argument for the case. I gave you the information from my file. Did you read it? Well, my argument was that the alcohol bakes off of the cake. Did you bake it for three hours? What? Did you bake it for three hours? Of course not. It would burn. Well, according to this website, I mean my research, you have to bake the cake for three hours in order for it to bake off. I don't know about that one. I feel like the remaining alcohol is probably just for flavor. You can um, write that down for my argument. Anyways, <laughs> for the next sketch, it will be double, double cross. Quick, hack into the mainframe. If we don't get those launch codes, Dr. Dishonor will take over the world. Don't worry, I'm almost there. I'm in. Great! You printed out the codes. Now hand them over so I can type them into the launch station. Dr. Dishonorable. Evan Hunk. What are you doing here? Why don't you- <laughs> I'm the one that's betraying you! <gasps> You're betraying me? That's right! Now hand it over! Okay, boss. Psych, I'm double, double crossing you! Take it, Evan. Take that, Dishonorable. My man Tim Velps wouldn't double cross me. Or would I? <gasps> you double, double, double cross me! <laughs> now with the my son, I can't take out of the world! First, you burned down the orphanage. Now this? <laughs> they were on a field trip! A field trip to your child trafficking ring? <laughs> I don't have time for this! <laughs> I'm not just evil, I'm dishonorable. Just give me the codes, Tim! Sure, but first, tell me your deepest, darkest secret. <laughs> this might be a problem, but I can trust him! Ha! Huh. He spent $500 on mobile games this week! 
Elf. You're toast, Dishonorable. With this information my double, 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 double agent is giving me, you will be no match. Wait, wouldn't I be a double, double, double agent? Huh? I mean, he's got a point. He double, 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 double crossed you. That's four doubles. And usually when someone double, double crosses you, they're a double agent. <laughs> So when it's agent instead of cross, it should be one less double. Or would it divide the doubles by two? What? <laughs> I actually don't think so. Unless he would be double, double, double cross me, it'd be a double, double agent. Wait, maybe that's wrong. How many doubles was it? Four, I think. Well, glad we don't have to worry about that anymore now that you're on my side. Ah, uh, yeah, about that. <gasps> You're double, 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 double crossing me? <laughs> no! You double, 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 double cross me! You see, I double, 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 double cross both of you. Well, I only double, 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 double crossed you, Dr. Dishonorable, four doubles instead of five. I ripped up those codes because I have the real codes in my pocket. And I'm about to send them to a third party. <laughs> Wait, why do we have one last double? Well, when I double-crossed Evan, I didn't double-cross you yet, Dr. Dishonorable, so naturally you have one less double. Wait, since we both got double-crossed in the same cross, um, that can't work. And I mean, since it's a third party, wouldn't we have been double-double-double-triple-crossed? Um, if we're adding triples, then doesn't that mean we're being sex-double-crossed? <laughs> but then that defeats the purpose of the triple! Um, hello? A third party has the codes. Let me back to Jim. Don't you want to take them back? Yeah, but I want to figure out that double, 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 triple cross stuff! <laughs> okay, so how is this going to end? Sir? Why do you always have to interrupt me when I'm about to introduce the next sketch? I just want to tell you that we lost the case. Okay, good to know. We lost the case?! I knew that Roy Shields was a no good! <laughs> <sighs> What's my sentence? Uh, they want your a little sketchy. What?! <gasps> they can take anything, but not my a little sketchy. I've put my heart and soul into this. Without a little sketchy, I'm incomplete. A little body. It would destroy me. And, 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 and. Sir, you didn't let me finish. They want your a little sketchy earnings. But I don't get paid for this. Exactly. Which means you don't have to pay anything. Yes! For once I am happy, I am broke. Yes! Got through the case. Let's go. We lost the case. Well, I, yeah. Well, I don't care. At least I wasn't held in contempt for court again. Besides, I think that great word my, work of mine deserves a hefty payment. Something like fifty thousand. Ah! No way I'm paying for this, especially for your services. How can I get out of it? If the episode ends before you pay, Roy. Hey, hey, hey! I'm right here. Then we will go back to the status quo. Oh. Ah, uh, perfect! What? Better a time than ever to close off another episode of A Little Sketchy! Break the drip, for real, for real. We got the Crocs. We got the pants. We got the shirt. We got the, oh, we got the seltzer. 